Dear friends in Christ, on this most holy night in which our Lord Jesus passed over from death to life, the Church invites her members dispersed throughout the world to gather in vigil and prayer. For this is the Passover of the Lord, in which by hearing his word and celebrating his sacraments, we share in his victory over death. Let us pray. O oh God, through your Son, you have bestowed upon your people the brightness of your light. Sanctify this new fire and grant that in this Paschal feast we may so burn with heavenly desires that with pure minds we may attain to the festival of everlasting light through Jesus Christ our Lord. Just let the, we got the other ones here. We're good. Yeah. yeah, let's go do them inside.
Let us hear the record of God's saving deeds in history, how he saved his people in ages past, and let us pray that our God will bring each of us to the fullness of redemption. Was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us, bringing us out of Egypt? Is this not the very thing we told you in Egypt? Let us alone and let us serve the Egyptians, for it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. But Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. Stand firm and see the deliverance that the Lord will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you have only to keep still. Then the Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward. But you lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it that the Israelites may go into the sea on dry ground. Then I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them. And so I will gain glory for myself over Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and his chariot drivers. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gained glory for myself over Pharaoh, his chariots and his chariot drivers. The angel of God, who was going before the Israelite army, moved and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud moved from in front of them and took its place behind them. It came between the army of Egypt and the army of Israel. And so the cloud was there with the darkness, and it lit up the night. One did not come near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and turned the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. The Israelites went into the sea on dry ground, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went into the sea after them, all of Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and chariot drivers. At the morning watch, the Lord in the pillar of fire and cloud looked down upon the Egyptian army and threw the Egyptian army into panic. He clogged their chariot wheels so that they turned with difficulty. The Egyptians said, Let us flee from the Israelites, for the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, so that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and their chariot drivers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea returned to its normal depth. 
As the Egyptians fled before it, the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the chariot drivers, the entire army of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea. Not one of them remained. But the Israelites walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great work that the Lord did against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord and believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. Then the prophet Miriam, Aaron's sister, took a tambourine in her hand, and all the women went out after her with tambourines and with dancing. And Miriam sang to them, Sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. Horse and rider he has thrown into the seas. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O oh God, whose wonderful deeds of old shine forth even to our own day, you once delivered by the power of your mighty arm your chosen people from slavery under Pharaoh to be a sign for us of the salvation of all nations by the water of baptism. Grant that all peoples of the earth may be numbered among the offspring of Abraham and rejoice in the inheritance of Israel. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. God's repentance cannot be con contained. A reading from Jonah. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittai, saying, Go at once to Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it, for their wickedness has come before me. But Jonah set out to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid his fare and went on board to go with them to Tarshish, away from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord hurled a great wind upon the sea, and such a mighty storm came up upon the sea that the ship threatened to break up. Then the sailors were afraid, and each cried to his God. They threw the cargo that was in the ship into the sea to lighten it for them. Jonah, meanwhile, had gone down into the hold of the ship and had lain down and was fast asleep. The captain came and said to him, What are you doing sound asleep? Get up, call on your God. Perhaps the God will spare us a thought so that we do not perish. The sailors said to one another, Come, let us cast lots so that we may know on whose account this calamity has come upon us. So they cast lots, and the lot fell on Jonah. Then they said to him, Tell us why this calamity has come upon us. What is your occupation? Where do you come from? What is your country? And of what people are you? I am a Hebrew, he replied. I worship the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. Then the men were even more afraid and said to him, What is this that you have done? For the men knew that he was fleeing from the presence of the Lord because he had told them so. Then they said to him, What shall we do to you that the sea may quiet down for us? For the sea was growing more and more tempestuous. He said to them, 
pick me up and throw me into the sea. Then the sea will quiet down for you. For I know it is because of me that this great storm has come upon you. Nevertheless, the men rode hard to bring the ship back to land, but they could not, for the sea grew more and more stormy against them. Then they cried out to the Lord, Please, O Lord, we pray, do not let us perish on account of this man's life. Do not make us guilty of innocent blood, for you, O Lord, have done as it pleased you. So they picked Jonah up and threw him into the sea, and the sea ceased from its raging. Then the men feared the Lord even more, and they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows. But the Lord provided a large fish to swallow up Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Then Jonah prayed to the Lord his God from the belly of the fish. The word of the Lord. Let us pray. Almighty God, lover of all people, we, pray you, we praise you for your grace that forgives and includes all people, even those we would name as enemies. May we open our hearts to others and willingly go where you send us through Jesus Christ our Lord.
Walking Through the Fire, Selected Verses of Daniel 3. King Nebuchadnezzar made a golden statue whose height was 60 cubits and whose width was 6 cubits. He set it on the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Then King Nebuchadnezzar sent for the satraps, the prefects, the governors, the counselors, the treasurers, the justices, the magistrates, and all the officials of the provinces to assemble and come to the dedication of the statue that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. When they were standing before the statue that Nebuchadnezzar had set up, the herald proclaimed aloud, you are commanded, O peoples, nations, and languages, that when you hear the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, drum, and entire musical ensemble, you are to fall down and worship the golden statue that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Whoever does not fall down and worship shall immediately be thrown into the furnace of blazing fire. Therefore, as soon as all the peoples heard the sound of the horn, pipe, trigon, harp, drum, and entire musical ensemble, all the nations, peoples, and languages fell down and worshipped the golden statue that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Accordingly, at this time, certain Chaldeans came forward and denounced the Jews. They said to King Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. O king, you have made a decree that everyone who hears the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, drum, and entire musical ensemble shall fall down and worship the golden statue, and whoever does not fall down and worship shall be thrown into a furnace of blazing fire. There are certain Jews whom you have appointed over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, these pay no heed to you, O king. They do not serve your gods, and they do not worship the golden statue that you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in furious rage, commanded that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be brought in. So they brought those men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true? O oh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods and you do not serve the golden statue that I have set up? Now if you are ready, when you hear the sound of the horn, the pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, drum, and entire musical ensemble to fall down and worship the statue that I have made, well and good. But if you do not worship, you shall immediately be thrown into a furnace of blazing fire. And who is the God that will deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to present a defense to you in this matter. If our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the furnace of blazing fire and out of your hand, O king, let him deliver us. But if not, be it known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods and we will not worship the golden statue that you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was so filled with rage against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that his face was distorted. He ordered the furnace heated up seven times more than was customary and ordered some of the strongest guards in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to throw them into the furnace of blazing fire. So the men were bound, still wearing their tunics, their trousers, their hats, and their other garments, and they were thrown into the furnace of blazing fire because the king's command was urgent and the furnace was so overheated, the raging flames killed the men who lifted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But the three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound into the furnace of blazing fire.
Then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished and rose up quickly. He said to his counselors, Was it not three men that we threw bound into the fire? They answered the king, True, O king. I see four men unbound, walking in the middle of the fire, and they are not hurt. And the fourth has the appearance of a god. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out, come here. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out from the fire. And the satraps, the prefects, the governors, and the king's counselors gathered together and saw that the fire had not any power over the bodies of those men. The hair of their heads was not singed. Their turned tunics were not harmed. And not even the smell of fire came from them. Nebuchadnezzar said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered his servants, who trusted in him. They disobeyed the king's command and yielded up their bodies rather than serve and worship any god except their own god. Therefore, I make a decree. Any people, nation, or language that utters blasphemy against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be torn limb from limb and their houses laid in ruins, for there is no other God who is able to deliver in this way. Let us pray. Who alone is worthy of our worship, fill us with the courage and fortitude to face the blazing fires of our lives and trust you always to walk with us and save us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Ah, oh, King Nebuchadnezzar. Yeah, your buddy was kind of a clown. He really was. I mean, it's meant to be kind of a scary story on one hand, but it's funny. And the way that story is told, it's meant to make you laugh. It's, it's ridiculous. He's so, he gets so full of himself, and he's, he never actually gets it, but anyway, he tries. Like, he's so full of himself, he has a statue of himself, built, orders everybody to, to worship it, and then... Your, our friends Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego show up and say they're not going to. And so he's, you know, they keep talking about the horn, the pipe, the lyre. I mean, it's supposed, it's supposed to be abs as absurd sounding as it would be to watch. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego refuse. Now, you would think in one way they have lots of choices to make, or at least some basic choices to make. They could... They could kind of go bow down before this statue of Nebuchadnezzar and then think what they want. Okay, okay, whatever, whatever, dude, I'll go bow at this thing and then believe what I want. They could refuse to do it and then go get a bunch of people whipped up and, and start some kind of violent uprising. Or they just do what they do there and just say, you know what, we're not going to do that, actually. And... We're good with it. We're not going to worship this, and we, we trust that in one way or another, our God will deliver us. But then they say, but if not, we're still not going to do it anyway. <laughs> now, you might think, but they say, but if not, are they doubting God? No, I, they trust that God will deliver them. 
But in that case, they don't know what the outcome will be. It's very possible that in refusing to worship the statue that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up, we're supposed to laugh every time that gets said, (laughs) that they could be thrown into this furnace of fire and die. They have no way of knowing. In fact, many who have stood up to the Nebuchadnezzars of the world have found themselves in just that place. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. writing from Birmingham jail to white moderate Christians saying, I know you want us to wait for justice, but we can't. King invokes Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego as examples of ones who stood up against Nebuchadnezzar and said, we will not. Many found themselves standing in the face of such waves of power that they found themselves overcome and were killed. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego found themselves in that furnace and came out. Easy to identify with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, those who stay steady with God, trust God to to save them, and especially when it works out that way. You know, when you actually end up in the fiery furnace and you don't get burned up, because sometimes we do. Sometimes in the fiery furnaces of our lives, we just do. That's sometimes the way it goes. God is still always there with us. God was in the furnace. God is in there with us. Easy to sometimes identify, I think, with the righteousness of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Harder, though, to identify ourselves with Nebuchadnezzar as people who possess, in some ways, a kind of privilege in the world, in our own way, who can sometimes get to thinking, that's what Paul said to people, do not think of yourselves more highly than you ought. He said that to people because they sometimes thought more highly of themselves than they ought. Reference King Nebuchadnezzar. (laughs) Reference ourselves at various points. Sometimes we're aware that we're doing it, and sometimes we aren't. Even when the thing is over and he realizes that the God has delivered, the true God has delivered Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, then he says, now you're going to worship that God, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the one true God, and if you don't, I'm going to rip you from limb to limb. It's like, dude, did you not not understand what's happening here? He still doesn't get it. And that's the point of, of Daniel. Sometimes we're just so stubborn, we don't even see it when it's right in front of us. We can't even see the deliverance. But God is always with us. We don't really know how it will turn out. But as we stand in this vigil and hear how God has continually delivered God's people, whether we're Nebuchadnezzar and miss the entire point over and over again, or whether we have the faith of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, or whether, like me at least, it's a bit of both depending on the day you encounter me, God is there to deliver us. And will always deliver us. From bondage in Egypt to a place of freedom. From our own ignorance and our own inability to see God at work in the world, to give us an eye, the eye of our heart, to see a world and to see it transformed in love, where all people are welcome before God. Nebuchadnezzar, too.
The candidates will now be presented. I present Mr. Cooter for confirmation, Ryan Weber, Jim Rogers, and Captain Jim Rogers for reaffirmation. I present Naftali Fields Forbes for confirmation, and I present Aaron Fields Forbes, Doug Hall, Audrey Hall, Susan Cray, Joe Schmidt, and Kathy Bowers for uh, reception. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil? Do you renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? Will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support these persons in their life in Christ? Let us join with those who are committing themselves to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant. Please stand. Do you believe in God the Father? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? I Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God and Christ? I will. will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will. will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will. Let us now pray for these persons who have renewed their commitment to Christ. Deliver them, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Lord, Open their hearts to your grace and truth. Lord, Fill them with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, Keep them in the faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, Teach them to love others in the power of the spirit. Lord, Send them into the world and witness to your love. Bring them to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, our Grant, O oh Lord, that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. Let us now pray for these persons who have renewed their commitment to Christ. Almighty God, we thank you that by the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, you have overcome sin and brought us to yourself, and that by the sealing of your Holy Spirit, you have bound us to your service. Renew in these your servants the covenant you made with them at their baptism. Send them forth in the power of that Spirit to perform the service you said before them. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Defend, O Lord, your servant Kristen, with your heavenly grace, that she may continue yours forever daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until she comes to your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Defend, O Lord, your servant Naphtali with your heavenly grace 
that she may continue yours forever. The daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until she comes to your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Amen. Defend, O oh Lord, your servant Kathy with your heavenly grace, that she may continue yours forever, and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until she comes to your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Susan, we recognize you as a member of the one holy Catholic and apostolic church and we receive you into the fellowship of this communion. God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep you. Aaron, we recognize you as a member of the one holy Catholic and apostolic church, and we receive you into the fellowship of this communion. God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep you. Audrey, we recognize you as a member of the One Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church, and we receive you into the fellowship of this communion. God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep you. Amen. Doug, we recognize you as a member of the One Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church, and we receive you into the fellowship of this communion. God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep you. Joe, we recognize you as a member of the One Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church, and we receive you into the fellowship of this communion. God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep you. Amen. Amen. Brian, may the Holy Spirit, who has begun a good work in you, direct and uphold you in the service of Christ and his kingdom. Amen. Jim, may the Holy Spirit, who has begun a good work in you, direct and uphold you in the service of Christ and his kingdom. Amen. Amen. Kathy Jo, may the Holy Spirit, who has begun a good work in you, direct and uphold you in the service of Christ and his kingdom. Amen. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, let your fatherly hand ever be over these your servants. Let your Holy Spirit ever be with them. And so lead them in the knowledge and obedience of your word that they may serve you in this life and dwell with you in the life to come through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen.
be with you. Let us pray. O God, who made this holy night to shine with the glory of the Lord's resurrection, stir up in your church that spirit of adoption which is given to us in baptism, that we, being renewed both in body and mind, may worship you in sincerity and truth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we might, to talk, might walk, with, walk in the newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old selves was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed, and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he had died, he died to sin, once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has been raised from the dead, and indeed, he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. 
So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. The Gospel of the Lord. of the Lord be always with you. you. Welcome to the Cathedral of St. Paul. I'm Melinda, I serve as Dean of the Cathedral, and we're so glad you've joined us for this most joyous occasion of the Easter Vigil. I want to let you know a little bit about how the Eucharist will work tonight. The ushers will dismiss you by pews. You'll receive the bread. There'll be two lines, two different people distributing bread. You'll turn. There will be two chalices on either side. They have the same wine. So just <laughs> distribute the wine accordingly. I think, I think that should all work very well. We're so glad you're here. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, and the calling of Israel to be your people and your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. We offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, Father.
gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world of peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness. blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and forever. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the resurrection of Jesus.